Hello, welcome to another episode of Quick and Nerdy, an MSP-friendly how-to channel dedicated to Veeam-powered Baz and Draz offerings. As always, I'm your host, Brandon McCoy, Systems Engineer Advisor, supporting our Veeam Cloud and Service Providers. And today, got an all-new video on Veeam Data Cloud Vault. So you may have heard me talk about Veeam Data Cloud in some other videos. These are Veeam's hosted product solutions. We've got Veeam Backup for 365, Veeam Backup for Azure, and we just released Veeam Backup for Salesforce and Veeam Backup for Enter ID, all hosted, managed by Veeam. Well, Veeam Data Cloud Vault is Veeam's cloud storage. So if you're looking to back up to Veeam, we've now got you covered there as well. This video is pretty straightforward. It's a pretty simple um, offering, simple idea, but I do want to kind of get into exactly what it is under the hood, some things to be aware of, different additions, and show you what it looks like out in the wild. So why don't we just jump right in. So first and foremost, what is Vault Storage? Well, it's Azure Cool Blob Storage under the hood or behind the cloud. Uh, the difference is that using Vault versus, you know, just purchasing Azure Cool Blob Storage yourself and using your own storage account, well, first of all, it's a Veeam-supported product. So if you have an issue and it turns out to be the storage, you open up a ticket with Veeam, we're going to be able to troubleshoot that. Also, Azure charges you egress fees and API fees anytime you even think about your data. And I'm not picking on Microsoft here, right? This is any of the big cloud providers. AWS does the same thing. With Veeam, we've negotiated those out. Now, there is a fair use policy when it comes to egress fees, depending on the edition that you choose. I'll mention that in the next slide. But in general, there's no egress fees for fair use. There's no API fees. It's just a flat fee of $14 a month or I believe $24 a month uh, for the different editions. It's also immutable out of the box, so there's no complex setups. You don't have to worry about making sure that everything is, is configured securely. You just add the storage to your backup server and you're ready to go. Now let's talk about the different additions. There's foundation and advanced. Foundation, this is meant for a secondary or an archive copy. It does have a fair use policy. So the fair use policy states that any restore or yeah, I'm sorry, any restore above 20% of the total amount of allocated storage uh, within a given year, you could be subjected to uh, egress fees. So this is not meant to be a storage that you're constantly restoring from and testing and all that. This is meant to be an archive copy just in case. This is using locally redundant storage. So you have three copies of your data within one data center and you get to choose the country in which your data resides. Now the advanced is meant for primary, but it could also be for secondary. Now this is truly unlimited. Uh, it does have a fair use of 100% of your data per month. So as long as you're not restoring like double the amount of data that you have within a month period, uh, you should be fine, which I don't really see too many reasons why you'd want to restore more than 100% of your backups in a, in a given month. This is using zone redundant storage. So you have one copy of your data, but it's in three different data centers. So it's spread out a lot more, more durability, and you also get to choose the region. So east or west, US or central. So a little more flexibility there. Now I'd like to also get into how you purchase this and how you manage your vault subscription. So let's get into it. So I'm actually here in the Azure Marketplace. There's two different ways that you can purchase Vault. One is you can go through your aggregator, or two, you can go through the Azure Marketplace. Now, if you go through your aggregator, uh, I believe you have to purchase this in five terabyte increments at a time. Uh, through the Marketplace, you can do one terabyte at a time. Uh, there may be different uh, you know, ways of doing that through your aggregator, so check with your sales rep. But I'm here in the, the Marketplace. And I'm just going to search for Veeam. And you can see right here, Veeam Data Cloud Vault. Now, this is purchased in uh, one year at a time. So it's not month to month. And at the time of this video, uh, we're in April of 2025. It is not on the rental program. Um, it will be in the future, but right now it's not. So it is uh, purchased a year um, at a time. 
And it's got these different uh, regions. It talks about core regions. It also talks about non-core regions. I'm not really sure what the difference is other than non-core regions are more expensive. So, you know, if you can help it, I would stick with the core regions. I assume that's just where they would prefer you uh, to purchase the storage. Plans and pricing. So like we talked about, vault and advanced. You've got one year and three year uh, terms. And you can check out the you know the differences here um, and you would just click get it now sign in with your uh, uh, Microsoft subscription and now you have purchased a vault subscription now there is a difference in the subscriptions and the actual vaults right so the subscription is who owns the vault and then you can have multiple vaults underneath that uh, one account can have up to four subscriptions of vault but you can have unlimited vaults. So you can think of just vault as a repository, right? You can have as many vaults as you want per subscription, but you can only have four subscriptions max. Now, some other things to note. Um, here I'm in my, my.veeam.com. This is the My Account Portal. This is where you'll find your subscriptions and your vaults. Unfortunately, I don't have any, but what I would do is I would come to Cloud Management and you'll see vaults. You'll also see backup servers. Um, this is going to be important in just a moment because one thing you need to know is that whoever owns the license for the backup server must also own the vault subscription. And we're actually going to verify that when you connect your vault storage. So let's say the customer owns their own Veeam licensing. It's perpetual licensing. It's not rental. And the license belongs to ABC customer. You cannot sell them your vault, which is owned by serviceprovider.com, right? If you're selling your rental licensing to your customer and the rental licenses are under serviceprovider.com, you can add your vault subscription to that customer. So something to be aware of. I know most service providers are using rental keys, um, so that's fine. But if you have a situation where a customer owns their own license, um, the, the vault would need to be under their name as well. So I've got my vaults here. Uh, well, I don't, but this is where you would have those. Now, I'm going to show you a couple screenshots from the Help Center. When you first start, you'll be able to create your default uh, location. This is that first vault. You could just kind of read through this in terms of adding, but it's pretty straightforward. It'll walk you through there uh, in the wizard. It'll have some information here. You can change the name. It'll be called default location, I believe. You can change the name of that so it'll show up as whatever you want it to. Um, and then you've got these assigned backup servers. So let's actually jump into the lab and I'll show you uh, what this looks like inside of backup and replication. So here we are inside of backup and replication. Now, one thing to note is at this time, Backup and Replication is the only product that supports Vault. So if you're using Veeam Backup for 365 or some other, some other Veeam product, Vault Storage at this time only works for Backup and Replication, right? We're currently analyzing, um, you know, market prices and things like that to determine how we should uh, integrate this with other products. Backup and Replication is what we've done our research on in terms of those egress and API fees being pre-negotiated. So just know that Backup and Replication. Um, it also supports Cloud Connect. Uh, Cloud Connect is Backup and Replication from a you know an ISO, a product. It's just different features. So uh, both are supported. There are some things to know about Cloud Connect. We'll get into that in just a minute. Let's talk about adding your vault to Backup and Replication. So first, I'm going to show you what it looks like adding a repository. So if I click Add and I select Veeam Data Cloud Vault, you can give your repository a name and click Next. So what's really cool is typically when you add an object storage repository, you're adding in some account keys. Here, it's actually just connecting to your my.veeam account like we just showed in the previous screen. If I click Authorized, we're going to sign in and we're going to make sure that your backup server and your vault subscription match, right? Like I was mentioning from the licensing perspective. And then your vaults, again, you'd click manage and it would show you all the different vaults you have. Now, there's also a, a customer portal where you can look at all the, the vaults that you have, show your total storage usage across all those. We'll show that in a minute too. 
uh, but this is just adding those in. Now since I can't add a new one, I'm going to go to the one I've already got and show you what the rest of this looks like. If you've ever added an object storage repository into Veeam, uh, you should be pretty familiar with this. So here's uh, the uh, account that I've already added in. It's going to verify. And then in the container section right here, so this is where I've got uh, my vault, the folder where the backups are stored. I can limit how much storage can go there. And then it's make backups immutable. So the immutability is not something that you can turn off. It is um, on there by default. You can decide how long you'd like to keep the backups immutable for. Uh, 30 days is going to be the minimum, even if you change it here. So leave it at at least 30 days. If you'd like your immutability to be longer, you can specify that here. And this means that backups can't be deleted or modified for X number of days. Okay, the other pieces here are just generic stuff for adding repositories, so I'm not going to get into that here. Um, and that's it. You've got your repository. You can add that as a scale-out backup repository, backup and backup copy jobs. Everything else is just like using any other type of repository. So let's get into what it looks like from a Cloud Connect perspective. All right, so here we are in Cloud Connect, and you know it's the same thing in terms of adding in the repository. But the reason I wanted to show you this is because with Cloud Connect, let's say you have a customer who's got some agents, and you want to back them up to Vault. While this is possible, you have to be aware of something. So I'm going to right-click on this Vault. I'm going to click uh, Properties, and I'm going to go down to the account now. You see where it says connection mode right here? So there is this direct or through a gateway server. Now with some other object storages, you are able to say, I want my agents to go directly to object storage and not go through my Cloud Connect. Even though Cloud Connect is presenting the storage, I'm going to bypass Cloud Connect and my data traffic is going to flow directly to object storage. With Azure and with Veeam Data Vault, that is not possible. The data must go through the Veeam server. So you can use Vault with Cloud Connect, but you have to be aware that data will need to come through your Veeam Cloud Connect gateway and then go to the Vault. So if your Cloud Connect server is in Azure already, shouldn't matter. If it's in your own data center, you know, the data is going to go there first and then to Azure. So there's just an extra hop. So it's just something to be aware of. And I think it's, you know, kind of important to talk about. Uh, besides that, you know, you can split this up into multi-tenancy. All the other Cloud Connect things are uh, fine. One last thing that I'll mention, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but transparency, I forgot. Your backups will need to be encrypted. So keep that in mind. All backups going to Vault must be encrypted. Okay. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about the portal and then we'll call it a wrap. All right. So this is the Veeam Data Cloud Vault portal where you can uh, further work with your vaults. So not the subscriptions in the My Account, but the actual uh, vaults. You can see all the vaults that you have. I've got my account keys. You can also come in here and look at your um, oops, doing dashboard. Yeah, you can see like the total amount of storage used for the month, right? And get some information about those vaults. So nice little portal to kind of see what's going on in your environment across all the uh, vaults that you have. So that's it for this video. Tried to make it as short as possible. There is a few things I wanted you to be aware of. Hope you found it uh, interesting, and thank you for your time. And until next time, keep on Veeam in the free world.